Hi, Andrew Bell here with you on a beautiful sunny day. As you may recall in my report a fortnight ago, we look at housing prices broadly throughout Australia. Today, we're having a look at the two key pieces of the price equation, and that of course is supply and demand. But before I do that, I always like to keep you abreast of any developments here on the Gold Coast between each of my reports. We've had an amazing 14 day period just a couple of weeks ago, where we had 77 sales in that short period. That was just before the announcement of the half percent interest rate drop. It gives some indication of the volume of people re-entering the market. Our commercial operation has been incredibly busy with quite a number of multi-million dollar transactions where, for example, just last Friday, we sold number 40 Narang Street at Southport for 3.5 million. That follows on the heels of a sale of 10 shops at Main Beach at auction under the hammer at 5.6 million. And as we speak, we're finalising contracts on a $6 million sale and a $14 million sale, and several other lower multi-million dollar sales. Residentially, it's been a brisk period. I'll be able to report you shortly on another sale, which will be a record residential sale price on the Gold Coast. Another example of the activity was our appointment to the sale of 30 apartments in the Outrigger Hotel building here in the heart of Surface Paradise, where we sold all of them in 14 days. The above activity is certainly surprising many you can only imagine just how much stronger it's going to be as the half a percent interest rate reduction benefits filter through and of course all the arm wrestling over Europe finally subsides. More of that later and I will give you an update on the record sale price in my next report. Well, real estate prices ultimately are driven by supply and demand. Fundamentally, demand comes from population increase, whether it's through natural means, natural birth, or migration and immigration. Australia's had a great deal of its demand come from strong population growth. Believe it or not, our natural birth rate has actually ticked up a little bit, but real estate won't see the benefit of that for another 20 odd years. But what we are getting at the benefit of today is the growth in population 20 years ago as those buyers are surfacing in today's market. The critical factor in demand is immigration. As you would recall in earlier reports, we've had very strong population growth until the GFC hit. And as a result, we cut back substantially as unemployment was forecast to rise. We've seen a slowdown in the population growth turn the corner now, and with the recently announced unemployment figure now back at 4.9%, we can see the enormous shortages in skilled labour starting to show again. We haven't even seen really the big demands for labour from the mining industry, which will start to surface as we move into 2013. So no doubt we will see the immigration start to rise rather sharply once again. We've also got peak levels of baby boomers retiring. So as we see these large groups of baby boomers retiring, we will have to look to overseas for replacements. We simply don't have enough natural population growth to cover this big group of retirees. This then brings us to the supply side of the equation. Well, the current financial year will be the seventh of the past nine years when home building numbers have fallen or flatlined. Building approvals are close to 20 year lows. Residential building approvals plummeted in February of this year, falling by 7.8% to just 10,771 dwellings throughout the entire country. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, of course, approvals for the full year to February 2012 were down 15.2%. However, approvals in March did see a pleasing pickup of 7.4%, but at best, we're now just flatlining. Final numbers for the current financial year will see the national construction down to about 135,000. That's down from 148,000 the previous year. Now, I'm not big on projecting 20 years ahead, but the National Housing Supply Council states that by 2030, we're likely to have a shortfall of 640,000 dwellings across the country. This doesn't allow for whatever changes may be implemented between now and then, but what is clear is the GFC has caused significant shortage in stock numbers. This situation is not quite evident yet because people are making do in all sorts of ways, but once confidence recovers, buying demand picks up and of course the shortage will really start to show itself. This will create much greater competition amongst new buyers as they come into the marketplace and something we haven't seen for quite some time. Whatever way you read it, the good news is that we aren't creating housing oversupply situation. This is giving the real estate market a very firm grounding for the present and for the next few years ahead, as it does take quite some time to turn around construction numbers. As I've mentioned before, 
All of the fundamentals are lining up well, from interest rates to unemployment levels, housing affordability to now stock levels. Once we do get that key component of buyer confidence dealt with, those who are buying properties today will know they bought at the perfect time. Well, all the best for the next fortnight and thanks for your time.